friends, my name is Mina. Welcome to my channel, Mina Reads. And today I'm trying a reading experiment. So in this video, I am going to be trying to read for 45 minutes every single day for seven days. So a little bit of context. One, this video is 110% inspired by Sunny from Sunny Kim. Um, I'm going to leave a link to her video in the description below. So again, 100% credit to her. I saw her do this first. And she gives a really detailed explanation as to why she picked uh, 45 minutes. And like she actually did some research to come to that number. So absolutely check out her video for all the added context. But I thought this would be a perfect experiment for me to do because I have very much gotten out of the practice of reading. I looked at my screen time for the previous week and my average was 13 hours a day. Do you have any idea how insane that is? And so I really want to replace some of that mindless scrolling with some intentional reading time. And I my glasses off because I was like uncontrollably sobbing over the second story in Love and Color by Balu Babalola. Genuinely crying to a degree that was embarrassing. This short story is like maybe it's not even 15 pages long. It's it's 10 it's like 12 pages long and my life has shifted forever. Like, it's so amazing. The second story in this collection is about Shahrazad and Shah. And this is like mythological retellings. So um, this is like a romance between the two. I don't want to call it a romance. But like it's a story about the love between Shahrazad and Shah. And it's set in this like alternate universe where Shahrazad is like a political fixer of some kind. And Shah is like a professor. But when I tell you that the final lines made me sob so terribly and it was so powerful to me okay so for my first 45 minute sprint i actually ended up reading exactly 45 pages that's my usual reading speed i think i read about a page a minute on average um sometimes faster sometimes not it depends on like the genre and like how into the book i am and i usually find that like the further i am into a story the faster i read so it definitely felt like it took me a long time to read like that first like 15 pages of the book but then the rest just came a lot faster so uh, it really it really all depends on like how into the reading groove I am um like how fast my reading speed is but I have to say that so far I am on the third story of this in love and color short story collection and I absolutely am adoring it her writing style is really like lyrical and poetic and it's really tapping into that like mythic you know um quality with the writing even though a lot of these retellings are sort of modern so i find that there's like a really good balance between the elements that are being reinterpreted or um just like reposition to show us something new with these characters and with these stories and tales but also like the writing style is really gorgeous but so far the Shahrazad one has definitely captured my heart like I'm obsessed really badly I wasn't expecting that I like I said am on the third story so this third story is about Nefertiti and the first story in the collection is about Osun and um yeah the Nefertiti story actually looks like it's like pretty long I'm still in the middle of that one so I couldn't tell you too much about it but I have loved the first two in the collection so far and I am very pleased that I decided to pick this up for this reading challenge
Okay, so day two and I've just completed my 45 minutes and I read 42 pages. Mm, no, I read 41 pages today and I'm still reading Love and Color. And I have to say that I am really obsessed with this collection. Like so far, every single story has been a banger for me. I'm on the fourth story of the collection and every story has been a banger for me. Like every single one. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm just obsessed. Like I really, really love this. Um, I think it's helping a little bit that I'm not completely familiar with the source material that some of this is being pulled from. So it's a much better reading experience than when I've tried to read retellings that are mostly like Greek mythological retellings because I feel like if I know too much about the source material, I'm constantly comparing to the source material with the retelling. So I think that, like I said, me not knowing as much about some of the um, cultures and folklore and mythologies that this story that this story collection is pulling on is really helping me like enjoy it a lot more as a reader and consumer of the story. I feel like when I read her previous book, um, I think this book actually came out first, but the first book I read by her was Honey and Spice. And Honey and Spice was good and it was well written, but it was also like a college romance. So it wasn't quite as like poetic as this one is, but I'm loving it. It's so good. Um, so yeah, I'm having a really, really good time and I feel like it's helping me get back into the reading groove. So I'm loving this challenge so far and I'll see you for day three. Okay, hi friends. So it is day three of the challenge and I just got back from walking my dog and I'm ready to get cozy on the couch and start my 45 minutes of reading before I get into my productive Sunday because I need to do a lot of cleaning and all that stuff to get me set up for the week. So for the first two days of the challenge, I was reading Love and Color and I will be going back to that but I did want to start off with reading Queenie by um, Candice Cardi Williams and I am 12 pages into this one and I just want to make a little bit of progress with it um, just to kind of get more of a feel for it because I'm in the middle of the first chapter so I'd like to start off by reading this and then if my attention is not captured then I will just go back to reading Love and Color. just realized that for some reason I don't know where the day four clips are so this is the day four clip on day four I read like I think about 20 pages of Queenie um, in my 45 minute sprint but that was about all because Queenie was definitely putting me in a reading slump so yeah this is day four not really but kind of sort of day five of reading for 45 minutes every day and I'm currently on page 159 of Love and Color. So I just read in my most recent sprint, I read uh, the Psyche and Eros story and I also read uh, this other one. I think you pronounce it Sia or Seiya, um, which is about like this warrior queen lady. I really liked that one. The Psyche and Eros one, I can't say that I did like that much. It was a little bit corny. I feel like the fact that it's set in like a really modern setting, it just felt a little out of place. Setting is a little bit less clear and like the time period that it's set in is a little less clear um, in a lot of them, but it has a old timey feel or it has a more magical feeling yeah so i don't know i just feel like the ones that are more contemporary are not my favorite so i'm not a huge fan of the psyche and eros one that i just finished this has been kind of an interesting week for me and it's crazy that it's been five days and i've only read like 159 pages of this book i mean i did read like 25 pages of queenie also but this is just so unlike me like when I'm in my reading era I definitely read way more than this in a given day even if I just were to spend like 45 minutes reading like I definitely would read way more than this so it's interesting like I really am in a slump but I think that this has been helping to definitely get me 
like motivated every day to sit down and read i think that i might be making a little bit more progress if this wasn't a short story collection because by its very nature as a short story collection you're always constantly introduced to new characters new circumstances a new story and so you have to get like re-immersed in the story and into the flow of the narrative each time you start a new story so it's not like it's not like if i was reading one narrative the whole way through and like you could get into the rhythm and the cadence of the story and then you just want to keep reading it's like every time you start getting into a story it's over so you have to restart that whole process not that it's a bad thing but it's just i think that that's also impacting like my reading speed which is something that i've kind of talked about before but yeah i can't wait to finish this it is good but i can't wait to finish this and like actually read a novel i'm excited about that i wish that that novel could be queenie but queenie just has bad vibes like it's radiating bad energy and i just really don't want to pick it up i'm not saying that queenie is a bad book but it's just the vibe is severely off with that book i can't I can't bring myself to pick it up this week. Okay, so it is a super snowy day today and luckily I don't have anywhere that I need to be so it's perfect reading conditions. I'm planning to snuggle up and start reading my book and do my 45 minutes for the day but I actually might read for a little bit more than 45 minutes because last night I just like I got the random urge to start Icarus by Kay Ancrum. So if you guys don't know, Kay Ancrum is one of my favorite authors of all time and um, Icarus is her most recent release and this is a story about an art thief named Icarus. He's 17 and his father has been like training him to be an art thief his whole life and so this is about him. He's continually breaking into this one man's house uh, because he has this like really extensive art collection that's really priceless and on one of his break-ins Icarus ends up meeting the man's son named Helios and so this is like it has some romantic vibes between them but it's also you know a typical kind of coming of age story and it's really wild in terms of the art theft stuff but it also deals kind of with um Icarus and like the emotional trauma and neglect that he's gone through with his father raising him in this really crazy way and everything that he's had to experience to kind of hide their life of crime um and listen there's something about Kay Ancrum's writing style that's just so incredible. It just completely draws me in, right? And I follow Kayla on Twitter and Kayla posted this really insane random tweet thread about an anime that I'm watching called Delicious in Dungeon and she was talking about how one of the characters is like a real freak. He definitely is. Delicious in Dungeon is about people who eat monsters and the one guy is like he eats monsters but he's also a little bit horny about it. He's a very strange dude, okay? And so Kayla made this whole thread talking about that. And I was like, me and Kayla are just so on the same wavelength. Like, I just love her presence so much on Twitter that I was like, you know what? Let me finally get around to reading this arc. The book is coming out March 26th, um, but I decided like, let me just finally get into it. So I picked it up at 10 p.m. last night thinking I was going to read a few pages just to set me up like within the first chapter or so. And then I was going to read it today while we do our 45 minute sprint um but no i stayed up till 3 a.m and i read 75 percent of the book 75 percent of the book i am obsessed to a degree that i can't even really begin to fully express to you when i tell you that i was spamming my best friend texting her all hours of the night with how insane i was going over this book you guys don't get it like you don't understand and there's this one line there's this one line that was like, I was made for you, I was born for you. Uh, he was like, I was yours before I was born, I'll be yours until I die. Like, oh, bitch, everything about it is just crazy. Like for me, the vibes are immaculate. I love Kayla as a storyteller. I think there's something about her writing style and about her voice as an author that just speaks to me so much. So I love the way that she communicates all of her different ideas. I love the way the characters are interacting with each other. I love the way that she always has stories that are about young children because these are teens they're 17 and they're in these really fraught emotional situations and what people do when they are young and dumb and without parental support and like how people navigate that how they cope with that there's no shame in it but about how you know these youths are making these different mistakes like all of her books are kind of about that about youths getting into mischief that they should not be in and 
I just really love the way that she discusses that and the way she discusses like community and the idea of having a community around you that really loves you and cares about you even if you don't know it or if you're not like emotionally available enough to fully appreciate that community for what it is it's something about that because Icarus is like a very insecure person and so he really doesn't understand that people like him or why they would like him but so many people like him so many people enjoy his presence and they care about him on a really deep level and it's just something about the book that genuinely just speaking on it right now i want to cry i want to sob i'm about to start my little 45 minute sprint so i can keep reading and i probably will keep reading until i just like finish the book because i must finish it today uh it's just like it's running through my mind on repeat but i have to i have to give you this whole diatribe because this book is so good just finished Icarus five stars K Ancrum I would offer you my firstborn if you wanted it like I don't know a better author I don't know a better person K's books just speak to me in a way that most books do not in a way that most books will never achieve I feel like genuinely feral the emotions that I have about this book I can't even think of the words to express to you how deeply and dearly I love this book and how intensely it has made me feel. I think that I, this is my first five star read of the year and I just feel like I'm buzzing. Like I, I feel like I'm on speed or something. Like I don't know. I, I just, I can't calm down. Like I, okay. It was good. <laughs> read the book please. I just got this package from Booksparks. I'm trying to hold it up because the books keep falling, but it's so cute. They're like all these wrapped up books and it's like a blind date with a book sort of thing, but it's so cute. And there's like a card for me here and everything. And it came with a candle. This one is scented as peony and passion fruit. It's also a, a DW home candle. I love those candles. Ooh, this one is so good. Like it smells really sweet. I love it. I love it. I don't usually go for like fruity scents when I buy candles, but I love that scent. So I got all these blind dates with a book. So I think for today's 45 minute sprint, I'm going to pick one of these books actually. And I'm just going to see which one I'm gravitating towards the most and read that for my 45 minute sprint today. Um, since we read a really good book yesterday, I absolutely adored Icarus. And now it's time to move on to something else. And I don't know if I want to go back to love and color yet i i hate to leave a book unfinished or two actually um but i just feel like i'm also not completely vibing with that book like i don't know and i don't want to get into a reading slump i already talked about how i'm in a slump um so i am going to be starting something new today just for a change of pace just for something to do but uh yeah so there's a bunch of them in here but this one is calling out to me this one says it's an age gap romance a secret relationship and it has plenty of spice so i'm excited to see what it is um but i love this one also pink is kind of my favorite color so we're gonna open this one and see what it is let's see oh okay so it's the art of scandal by regina black i actually have heard of this book before i've heard a lot of people talking about it over on tiktok um and i really don't know too much about it but it is blurbed by tia williams and i really love seven days in june when i read it last year so that's already a pretty good sign um it's also blurbed by ashley herring blake i love delilah green doesn't care um so yeah like i'm excited let's see what this is about it says on the night of her husband matt's 40th birthday Rachel receives a sexy, explicit text from him that she quickly realizes was meant for another woman. <gasps> oh. Oh my god. Okay, so this seems to be about a woman who's about to divorce her husband. And then she ends up meeting this artist. And this is a huge scandal because the protagonist was like a politician's wife. So it's like 
headline news, kind of wild and crazy. Thank you to Booksparks for sending me this really, really adorable gift. I am going to spend my 45 minutes reading this and I'm gonna see how I feel about it. So I finished my 45 minute sprint and I read for a while longer after that because I'm really, really into it. I read to page 80. I am loving this so far. It's really good. So the setup for this story is that we have our main character named Rachel and Rachel is a politician's wife and she is a black woman and her and her husband is a white man named Matt and so they have had kind of an interesting relationship but um he has started cheating on her pretty much um so he's cheating on her he has a mistress and he's planning to leave her but he's in the middle of like his current election cycle and so he doesn't want like a cheating scandal to ruin his opportunity to get reelected. and so they're like kind of pretending to still be married while also knowing that they are headed for divorce and on the day that she finds out that he's cheating on her she kind of goes to a drive-in movie theater and she meets this tattooed dude named Nathan who kind of has like a bad boy vibes but Nathan is so sweet and so sexy and I'm like deeply obsessed with him so far so Nathan is a business owner my dog's barking okay i think she stopped barking now but anyway nathan is a business owner he owns a laundromat his father wants him to join like his family business but nathan is not interested and nathan also is dyslexic and so like he's been made to feel really bad about himself because of his learning disability and so his learning disability and the way that he has been treated um like in different workplaces and in school has made him feel like really insecure but he wants to start a new career as like an artist and so he's kind of grappling with that like inner turmoil of having this artistic passion but not really knowing if he wants to pursue it um but like i said he's a business owner he owns a laundromat and him and rachel end up seeing each other that night at the drive-in movie theater while she's super drunk and like distraught over her marriage falling apart they see each other again at his laundromat and they're in contact and so where i'm at right now they're like secretly texting each other and it's just juicy it um, it's only like 7 o'clock right now, so I think I'm going to keep reading for a while and see how much progress I actually make. But I have to say, just a brief reflective moment, I do really think that taking the 45 minutes to read every day has been so helpful in kind of repairing my relationship to reading because I feel like I was really struggling like with my attention span. I just felt like I could not even finish a single page. Like I would open a book, I'd look at it and immediately close it back up. I wouldn't process any of the words on the page. Like I don't know what it was, but I just was so, so out of it and so disconnected from like reading. And I don't know, I feel like I'm really getting back into it with this reading experiment. I will say obviously that with the first two books that I tried, both Love and Color and Queenie, I... Queenie is an interesting book but it was just kind of sad in a way that <laughs> was not fun to read about and I I I need better vibes I need better vibes than what Queenie is offering and Love and Color while I do like that I just think that reading a short story collection as great as short stories are the act of like continuing to meet new characters and be put in a new situation and have to get accustomed to like a new plot line it's just such like a statico reading experience that it doesn't it doesn't lend itself to being like, oh my god, like I'm going to binge read this entire book. You know what I'm saying? So it, it works better, I think, for me to just sort of take my time slowly reading a story at a time in Love and Color, even though I am enjoying that one. But like when I really sat down to read Icarus, I flew through it. I'm flying through this so far and I'm having a really good time. So yeah, I feel like I feel like things are looking up in terms of my reading life. So I'm very happy about that. Okay, so yesterday was the final day of the challenge and I did actually end up like finishing the entire book after I gave you my last updates for yesterday. So I did just want to tell you that I did end up finishing Art of a Scandal and I think I'm going to be giving it four stars. I had so much fun reading this. Like I said, I think this is a book that would really work for someone who is a fan of like Kennedy Ryan or if you're a fan of Tia Williams. I think that the writing styles are a little bit similar and like, you know, the tone. Um, I think it will work for you if you're a fan of like Shonda Rhimes TV programs, if you like when romances are really passionate passionate and dramatic but also really angsty and swoon worthy and all that good stuff like I feel like if you enjoy that kind of thing like you will enjoy this book it has so many like fun elements and aspects to it it was just like peak entertainment for me there is some stuff that Nathan does at the end of this book that is sort of glossed over that I think was actually like really fucked up but if Rachel's not mad about it then I won't be mad about it but I do think it was a bit suspect 
just a little bit some of the stuff that he did in this um i feel like he didn't catch quite enough flack for me so i can't give it five stars but it was a really good time i had so much fun reading it and i had so much fun doing this challenge in general i feel like it was the perfect thing for getting me out of my reading slump and i just enjoyed it so much so i had a five star read and a four star read in this video how iconic is that thank you so much for watching and i have an interview to get to so wish me luck so bye guys Mwah.